Welcome to April's Leco Challenge. Today's problem is flatten nested list iterator. You are given a nested list of integers, nested list. Each element is either an integer or a list whose elements may also be integers or other lists. Implement an iterator to flatten it. So to implement this iterator, nested iterator class, we're going to initialize an iterator with this nested list. Uh, and we have two functions to return the next integer inside the nested list or this boolean if it has another one has next then we want to uh, return a true so this kind of reminds me of using a queue but this is going to be a nested list so we need to figure out how we could move through this nested list uh, and pop off the ones as long as there's a has next now doing flattening a nested list uh, was one of the first YouTube problems that I solved um, but this is different because we want to make it into an iterator. Now, how can we do that? Now, if we wanted to do this, um, they do give us a couple functions that are going to be helpful. We could check whether it's an integer or uh, if it's not, we can return a list, the list that it is, or we can return the integer. But how do we keep track of where we are inside of this nested iterator? After all, we could have an infinite amount of depths and columns. It could be structured in all sorts of ways. We could have it be just like one depth where it's like list, integer, list, or it can be here we could have like a list and then inside of here it could have integer, integer, and then another list, and then maybe inside that list there's integers and lists. So, you know, keeping track of that, there's really not a good way to do that because we don't know how far deep this nested list can go. So rather than keeping track of where we are and popping it off, like keeping the original structure, why don't we flatten it immediately? Uh, flatten this nested list first using a recursive function because that's normally how you do it. We would recursively return the integer or the list and just add that to some sort of temp array and flatten it all in order. So we're going to do that. Let's write a function right in here. We'll call it flatten and we're going to um, flatten whatever is in here and that's the list. And we're going to make this a recursive function. So let me separate that to make it a little bit more readable. So we will first initialize a temp and we'll say for every element inside of our nested list. If this is a integer, well then that's easy. We just add, append to our temp, whatever this integer is. So we can say I dot get integer. Now otherwise we know that it's a list, right? So in order to make sure that we're not just gonna extend it by this nested list, we have to put it back in here into the flatten and recursively add to this um, into this list, but we're going to extend it because we're going to return list now. Uh, so what we'll do is say extend flatten this i, uh, but make sure to pass it in as a list. All right, and make sure to return the temp. So now this is going to return to us the flatten dictionary at the very end. So what we'll do is we'll just call this n and we are going to call our flatten function for the nested list passed into us. Next, I'm also going to convert this into a queue. Um, and I suppose I can just do that here, actually. So make that into a queue. So now it becomes easy. Uh, to return the next, all we need to do is just pop off the left one. Pop left. And has next is literally just whether this thing exists or not. Because we'll be popping it off. Once we pop off the last one, this will return a false. And that would be it. So let's see if this works. And it looks like it's working. Let's go ahead and submit it. And there we go, accepted. Um, so time complexity wise, I think it's just O of however many number, um, you know, uh, objects we have, or not objects, how many <laughs> integers we have inside of our lists. And we do have this recursive call, so we do use O of n space as well. Uh, but that's all right. I, I think this is pretty optimal. There's probably some tricks to make it a little bit faster, but uh, yeah, that would be it. I think the big trick here is to figure out how we could instantiate some sort of recursive function inside of our iterator and make sure to just find the dictionary first, or I'm sorry, find the list first. That makes it a lot easier to return the next or and has next. Okay. All right. Thanks for watching my channel. Remember, do not trust me. I know nothing.